the Red Deer people. Catchy name, isn't it? But it is some kind of ancient human being full of mysterious secrets they have. First of all, looking at the location of where the Red Deer people were found in, the Red Deer people was found in the Tibetan Plateau. So the Tibetan Plateau is right next to China. And the Tibetan Plateau has it's a, indeed a large area of a landmass about, about the country of, of Algeria. In addition, the Red Deer people was found in the Malodong Cave. By this point, you want to ask me why the Red Deer people is named the Red Deer people. This is because inside the Malodong Cave where the Red Deer people was found in, there was Red Deer people paintings inside it, which gave it the name the Red Deer people. So now looking at the physical features of the Red Deer people, well, they were bipedal, which means that they were much more modernized by the fact that they were walking with two feet. They were slightly shorter than average, it's however, the real mystery is in their legs. So first of all, they, so they had a very narrow, narrow shaft, and the shaft is is this part of the bone, if you can see in the pic, in the screen behind you. And they also had a very, very thin cortex, and the cor cortex is the outer white layer of the bone. And because of these factors of the leg, this may, sh this may show that the red deer people had a different way of walking than a normal human being would walk. So. So now looking at, looking at the facial features of the Red Deer people, they had a very flat face, a broad nose, and a jutting jaw, um, most likely like the archaic Habsburgs. However, they just lacked a chin. So now regarding the Tibetan Plateau, the location of where the Red Deer people was found in, and like I said before, the, light, the Tibetan Plateau is a big area. However, certain parts of the Tibetan Plateau so the parts of the Tibetan Plateau is quite isolated, and, and isolation has a big effect on the species. So, so I, I can illustrate this by the example of the Rewarcha horses. So a Rewarcha horses is a specific type of horse that only lives in the Tibetan Plateau. The Rewarcha horses, first of all, lives in a very isolated area, in the, and they lived in the red part over there. And first of all, the isolation has a big effect on the Rio horses. First of all, they look very primitive. Also, they lived in a very high altitude, which means that they didn't need as much oxygen as other horses as horses needed. In it, vice versa, if these if these horses come down into a lower altitude, they were not they were not able to lift because of a different breathing condition. Therefore, the the red deer people has a different way of breathing. Breathing. And this is how this this is an example of how the isolation has a big effect on the species compared to the other species remaining. So from these clues that we have, such as the location and the physical features and the facial features and the result of isolation, we can create clues and and theories of why the red deer people are existing used to exist. So the first theory is that the red deer people is has evolved from from an ancient human being, most likely to be Homo erectus because of the ex same time of existence, or should be Denisovians because the people of Tibet, the people who are living in the Tibetan Plateau, um, has Denisovian DNA, which means that uh, there's a high, high percentage that the, red, that the Denisovians have lived in the Tibetan Plateau as well. So after, after, these, after the Red Deer people has been evolved from one of these species, they came into an isolated area of the Tibetan Plateau which can be one of these, He's, and, then, and then they stayed there f until extinction. And before extinction, they have been genetically drifted. And genetic drifting is, to say easily, it is a sampling error. Sampling error. So every, every, for the next generation, every gene is picked for the next generation. However, the wrong genes are picked, which means that the next generation has an error, error happening. And that is what happened to the Red Deer people. Afterwards, afterwards they stayed there until isolation. And, and until extinction, which means that they had no contact and no, no development in any parts of their bodies. The second theory is that the Red Deer people have been stayed, this, stayed peculiar from the start. Like I said in the start, I said that the Red Deer people has very peculiar physical traits. I'm saying that the theory states that the Red Deer people will stay from this from the start. They, this species went into the isolated area once again. They got genetically drifted. And then they stay there until extinction, which means that they had no contact once again, no development, and they did not change at all. And finally, the third theory states that the Red Deer people is an interbreeding between a very primitive, primitive ancient human being versus a more modernized ancient human being. This is because if, if, if it is an interbreeding between an 
are shy human beings, this means that it, do, it indeed actually makes sense that the red deer people are prim, prim, looking primitive despite their existence is much afterwards because they have, they have been descended from one of the archaic human beings. And I believe that the third theory is the most accurate to describe it because this clearly explains in the peculiar physical traits of the ancient human beings. And this theory was stated from Cooling Grooves, a the professor from the Australian National University. So currently we only have a little bit of information left for the left for the red deer people. We only have a little bit of research going on. However, as I go off the stage, I hope that we have more funding and more funding to more funding to have more research about our ancient human our ancient ancestors.